Hello, welcome to this part of our tutorial. Today we're gonna look at how to model a reservoir using another Python Mixpad software, a software that comes in the IPM suite, the Embal. Embal is um, a very interesting software that's to model the reservoir just as you model your well using Prosper. You model the reservoir using Embal and then you integrate both with your together with your surface equipment in GAP to model the full field. These um these are very interesting packages which I trust you will really enjoy. Another package which is also very interesting in the IPM package is the reveal. The reveal works more or less like Eclipse. If you've used Eclipse before then um reveal works on the same principle, almost the same data and all that stuff. And then um anyway, let's not go into that. Let's just go to the business of the day. Now this is the embal window. This is the embal window. And um if you look at this window you'll see just four tools in the menu bar. The first one is the file where you can create a new document, open and save and all that. The next one is the tools, the third is the unit and then the help. The units is where you set your units. It's very important if you're using the software for the first time to define you the unit you want to use. Is it oil field? Is it um, metric unit and all that? So I am actually using oil field units, but you can always change this at any time depending on the unit prevalent in the area where you're staying. Okay, so do also always check this anytime you want to perform simulation. For me, I, I don't think I want to change anything yet, so I'll leave this at the default values. Now, the, the one that interests us most in this tutorial is the tools. This shows the different tools that Embal uses to model the reservoir. Amongst them include the material balance, the reservoir location, the Monte Carlo, the decline curve analysis and all that. Um, the one I'm going to use in this tutorial is the material balance. Please, I'll advise you to look up literatures if you do not understand the working principle of this particular method. And then also look up literatures about these various tools and how they work. They have their own assumptions and um, scenarios where they work best. The material balance, the major assumption of the material balance is that it so uses a tank model. So that's what I'm going to use today. So I'll just go click on the material balance. And having clicked on that, of course, you see that the window has changed. We have our tank here called tank one, and then we have other menu items in the menu bar. Okay, so the first thing, just like in Prosper, the first thing we have to do is to define our flute, um, the flute type, and other information. So you go to options, and then you select the, your reservoir flute. For today, I'm modeling oil reservoir, so I'm going to use oil. So I'll leave everything at the default values because um, I want to make it very simple. So I'm using single tank. It's possible to use the multiple tanks. Okay, so I'm using simple PVT2, not variable. And then my production will be by tanks, not by well, and all that. Okay, let me at this point point out that it's very possible to, for you to attach wells to this reservoir in Embal and perform your simulation. But just like in Prosper, my tutorials on Prosper, I deliberately refused to model the surface equipment. Why? Because the, um, I'm looking forward to importing that model to GAP. And in GAP, that's where I'll model my surface equipment. So the same thing is what I'll do here. I will not add any well model, any well to this reservoir model because I will model my well using Prosper and I'll import both the well model in Prosper and the reservoir <coughs> model in Embal to gap in order to perform my full field simulation so that's why i will not add any well model to this okay so let's continue after we've defined our fluid type the next thing is to provide the pvt data for our fluid the fluid properties so i'm going to provide the gor which is three to five to five point um zero to eight Okay, so that's my formation GR. Uh, gravity is at 5.2. The gas gravity is at 0 0.8718. Sorry. You will have to pardon me, my keyboard is actually bad, and uh, these are trying periods, so 
I'll have to manage my own sneaky bird. The water salinity as it is at a whopping 78,000. Hydrogen sulfide impurity zero. Carbon dioxide I have 2.17. And then I have my nitrogen the impurity there is 0.6 percent. Okay, I have data with which to match this model, so I'll go to match, define my temperature, which is 215 degrees Fahrenheit, and then my bubble point pressure, which is at 1537. Okay, so um, because of the keyboard I'm using here, I, I'll i just paste data. I have copied the matching data from somewhere. So um, I couldn't just sit down here and start typing. So what I'm going to do is I'll click on this point, number one, right click, and then I'll paste the table. Okay, so that's that. And then I'll click on match to perform the matching and click on calculate. So the matching is complete and the recommended correlations are glass for for bubble points pressure, solution gas solution formation volume factor. Then I'm supposed to use billet oil for oil viscosity. So I'll just go done and then done. And of course it's showing that the pivot has been matched and we are good to use the matching. So I'll go done. Okay. Now having provided the PVT data, the next thing is to input the tank data. Uh, this is where we'll define the temperature and the OOIP that's oil original in place. Okay, so uh, you can change the name of the tank here if you want to. I'll just do that. I'll change it to reservoir. Just leave it at that. The temperature of the model as we have entered before is 215. The initial pressure of this model is 5150. that's a pretty high pressure the porosity is 0.21 the conic water um, saturation is at 0.15 and for the water compressibility we're gonna use the inbuilt correlation by inbuilt so we'll leave that at that use correlation in initial gas cap there is no gas cap in this reservoir so leave that use zero for that the OIP is four to five four to 5.704 then the start of production production for this whole started on the first day of um, January 2018 and so we started production Okay, now let me point something out here. There is a button here to calculate your bubble points pressure. Let's say, for instance, we didn't have the information for bubble points pressure. You can easily click on this and then it will calculate for you. So we are having the same value we entered. Okay, so that's just information. You can always validate the data you enter in every screen using the validate button. Okay, our data is valid, so we continue. What in flux? We are, our reservoir is actually radial aquifer, so we are going to use the first van evadingen method, the modified version. So we'll supply the necessary data reservoir thickness 120. The radius of our reservoir is 4200. Okay. Now the ratio of the outer to the inner diameter is 6. The encroachment angle here is 360 degrees all round. Wow. The aquifer permeability okay, is at 9.9 Sorry. Oh, so next. Then the compressibility has been calculated for us, so you see. That has saved us a lot of stress. The raw compaction, we don't need that. The pore volume versus that, not needed. So, our uh, next thing I have to do is to supply my relative permeability data 
I'm gonna use the query function and of course no hysteresis mm, fight just allow that uh, so we will pro have to provide our rushes so these for water the relative permeability ratio for water is 0 0.15 and that's the same value I have for oil that's the initial the residual sorry uh oh what's that okay the exponent for gas is 1 and then the endpoint saturation is at 0.9. Now the endpoint saturation for oil is at 0.8, and the exponent is at 0.71. The exponent for water is at 0.53. And then <coughs> the endpoint saturation is at 0 0.676. Okay, so the next thing is I do not have production history for now, so I'll leave that at that. And click on done. And of course, our reservoir has changed, so we have fluid in it now. Okay, we now have fluid, and of course, hovering over your CD OOIP. Now, if you have data, you can actually do some stream matching and all that, but that's not what I want to do. Now, I have defined my model. Let's just do some small calculation. Let's see how long we can produce from this model. So we can actually predict production from this model. So I'm going to click on prediction, um, production prediction and prediction setup. So the predict method will be prediction from production schedule with no worlds. There's an method production profile using world models. I'm not going to use that, like I said. I'm definitely not going to include worlds in this model. And another one which is very interesting is your ability. You can use this to calculate the number of worlds to achieve a particular target rate. I actually did this in one of my projects, and um, it was wonderful. But that's not what I'm going to do now. Okay. So we'll leave that. Leave these are the values where they are. We're not doing any of this water injection gas injection we don't want to use the fractional flow model then um, I have the production prediction stats of course it should be from the start of production the time step let me leave it at automatic so you can use whatever you want to use user defined and tell the simulator at what intervals to give you a report and the prediction and let me also leave that at automatic so what this means is the simulator You'll calculate and calculate and um, until a suitable point where it feels it doesn't want to calculate again or where the pressure becomes too low for production to occur. So that's what you have. Okay, so I'll click on done. I go to production again and then I'll look at my production constraints. So do you have data have you produced from this well? Of course we should or the rate at which you want to produce. So on the first day of January as the start of production you say we actually want to produce as 2018 so I produced our oil at about 5,000 barrels per day okay validates and our data is good so I'll click on done now the next thing I have to do is to check my reporting <coughs> schedule the frequency of reporting I also leave that at automatic okay okay so the next thing is um to run the prediction so I'll click on this and then I'll click on calculate and allow it to calculate for me so it's running the prediction telling you what you're actually gonna produce and all that so I'll allow the prediction to run and then once you're done We'll just come look at the result and then we'll continue. The calculation is complete and it took 22 seconds. So let's look at our production. So we see our old rate is at 5000 and the recovery factor is here. The tank pressure is here. So we can see what's happening. So the prediction has been run to um, 
2100 wow the year 2100 uh, it is first of January 2100 and at that year the pressure is still pretty high at 3033 psi mm. we started at 5150 right then we are we have 3033 that's not low at all that's still sufficient to produce and of course our recovery factor is um 35.17 so we still have a lot of oil down there and um, our rate is still at 500 so pressure is still high enough unfortunately for us we are not producing any water and we've not started producing gas so that is how to just you can use this to that is to show you that you can use Embel to predict production but let's make it more realistic I want to get results up to sorry not here okay let's see what if we change the production rate let's say we won't produce at 10,000 and produce at 10,000 barrels okay and then I want to get the results for a limited time so I come to this point production setup and I said start production at production date but end production for me was today's the 1st of November so end your production on the 1st of November 2020 okay so now I am good to go so I'll go run the production again one more time so click on that okay so we're good to go <laughs> now a prediction has been run from 2018 to 2020 and of course the pressure is at 4703 still very high and we've been able to recover just 2.4 of our oil <laughs> the oil rate is steady at 10,000 no gas no water so that is um, basically what you have to do so with that I'm done with this tutorial so in this tutorial I have shown you how to model a reservoir using MBAL and um, let me tell you this MBAL is actually the acronym for material balance M for material and BAL for balance so material balance is like the chief tool in MBAL although there are other tools like I've pointed out the Monte Carlo the decline curve analysis which is also very good especially in prediction and then um, the um, the, the other methods you have there so thank you very much for watching this tutorial um, my next tutorial I'm gonna go to cap and then bring up this model which you've just modeled and then a model from Prosper will be one of the models we've used now I'm gonna use the same data I'm using here to model a Prosper uh, a well in Prosper then I'm gonna do a full field simulation in gap so stay tuned for that tutorial it's a common less than two days from the day you see this tutorial, the day of the posting of this tutorial. So I wish you best of luck. Um, do well to share the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, send me information uh, if you like the video or if there are questions use the comment section or the mail displayed on the screen now. Or you can chat me up using the phone number, my WhatsApp phone number which is also displayed on the screen. So thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye.